Oh, hi there. This is Jonathan Schrantz, and I was just hanging out with my boy, Akiba Rubenstein. He's got a little bit of a better mustache than me going on. I'm a little bit jealous, I gotta admit it. But I was looking at some of his famous games today, and I do want to share a chess classic with you. This is his game against uh, George Solway from the Wuj tournament in 1908. And the key focus of this game is going to be weaknesses, especially a weakness in front of a backward pawn, how to exploit it, and how to get a good positional advantage. And this really is a nice strategic gem, a very nice masterpiece that he played. So without further ado, let's get into the game. Rubenstein plays d4, it goes d5, c4, e6, knight c3, c5, the Teresh defense, and after c takes d5, e takes d5, knight f3, knight f6, g3, we get the Rubenstein variation. The point is you put the bishop on g2 and you focus the pressure on d5. So with that in mind, knight to c6, bishop g2, and now an interesting choice by black, c takes d4, allowing knight takes uh, d4, and we have now the isolated pawn, but it won't stay isolated for long. Let's see what happens. After queen to b6, a sort of controversial choice, probably not the first choice of many players, knight takes c6, allowing black to take back with the pawn and fix the pawn structure here. Now it's not isolated anymore, but there is a backward pawn. So this game, after castles, bishop to e7, becomes all about the classic three-step approach to attacking a backward pawn, and that is to first go and um, get control of the square in front of the pawn, so you can imagine we can get control of c5 by playing moves such as knight a4, bishop e3, putting rooks and queens on the c-file, etc. Then you want to blockade the, c, uh, the c5 square, so he's going to put probably a bishop on c5, trade it off for black's bishop, try to get a knight on c5, etc. Even rooks, eventually, with all the pieces off the board, will be very well placed on the c-file, exerting pressure on the pawn. And step three, once you've attacked the pawn enough, take the pawn, and you'll be up a pawn. That is the goal. So knight a4 played with the idea of controlling c5. The queen wants to go where it's still in contact with c5. So the queen goes to b5, and now bishop to e3. Sort of following the plan. Castles... Now another good move, rook to c1, all the pieces harmoniously attacking the c5 square. Now black plays a move, very provocative, bishop to g4, attacking the e2 pawn, and provoking the move f3. However, it's funny, it actually, in a way, or maybe white just found a way, to make this useful for white after bishop to e6, if you don't know this one particular maneuver, it can be applied in a couple different positions. I do like this maneuver that white now has available with the pawn on f3, and the idea is, if you can believe it, rook to f2, bishop to f1, pawn somewhere, rook over to c2, and you're actually going to use this. The bishop will make a tempo on the queen, the rook's going to more easily go over to c2, and it's going to turn out f3 might actually be a little helpful for white so after bishop to c5 okay we controlled the square next step jump on in there rook e8 these bishops are going to get traded off at some point we're in no hurry rook f2 rook f2 knight d7 all right attacking the c5 bishop we don't want to let the knight take it so let's trade the bishops we got the dark square piece off the board and after rook e7 we need to control c5 once again so a really nice move Queen to d4, and once again, white controls the c5 square. Um, you can also imagine we're still going to play bishop to f1. We're going to move the e-pawn. The rook's going to go over to c2, and it's all so simple. It flows like butter. After rook to c8, e3, attacking the queen. Queen has to go back, and now we are ready to trade the knights off even. So after the trade, we get all of the rooks coming over to the c-file, and now queen to b6. So it's time. We've sort of put as much pressure as we can with the rooks. It's time to attack the pawn once again, and he finds a really excellent way to do it. b4 with the idea of b5, and there's a little pin here you can't take because of the pin. So in order to stop that, black plays a6, and now rook a5. Look at that. We have two targets now. You usually need two, and white now has to and black says all right why don't you take this i'll take here and then who knows maybe black will get counterplay white says 
No way. The A6 pawn is not going anywhere. You can't have my B pawn. No counterplay for you. And now, after rook a7, there is a little tactic. So can you guys pause your video, see if you can find the little tactic? This is not an award winner, but it's always nice when you find these clever little tactics. This one wins a pawn. And that move is rook takes c6. The idea, queen takes, we take the rook. And now um, he wants to keep his a pawn. The white queen doesn't give the c file away to black. You got to move your queen away. Queen to b7. And now, very simple, slow play. I like the way he does it. King f2 and bishop e2. Very slow. No rush at all. And now he comes in with the queen. The point is he's going to put the rook on the c file. And all of the pieces are in, active. He's up a pawn. It's all is going well. Should we let the queen in? No way. Rook to c5. Queen to b7. And now h4, just shutting down everything. Uh, locking all the black pawns there on the light squares. And black has absolutely nothing. Pawn down, nothing to show for it, and really, really hard to move. So, kind of ran out of ideas. He played a5. This is not going to get it done. Rook to c7. After queen to b8, you just push the pawn. All right, and maybe he's going to... Maybe white was going to play a4. Maybe not. He shuts it down. b6, the idea, b7. And here, so we had to give it up. So, white really won a masterclass game here. Excellent strategic play, really focused on how you can take control and attack those weaknesses in front of those backward pawns. So if you guys did like this game, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know if there's any other famous games you would like covered here on the channel. And as always, hit like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time for another Chess Classic.